All right, all right, all right. Are we ready to start another episode of Thought and Perspective with your... I think so. Dynamite! <laughs> host, Matt Logan. You're full of a lot of energy this morning. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Ken Quatrin. We knew... I See, I, I, uh, I, I knew that'd be fun because I knew you'd be able to take that. Yeah. And you know where that all comes from, right? Like. Yep. Uh, obviously Matthew McConaughey, yep. and then the Dynamite was the. Uh, I just the, my mind just went blank on that TV show, mm-hmm. but he said that, and then Hey 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 is you know the old cartoon Fat Albert. Yep. So I knew that that would that would that would work for you. It does. It does. <laughs> I practice it twice. I'll try to get to that energy <laughs> level like you have. Ah, uh, well, it's it's morning. <laughs> it's I was like, can you want to come here at nine? And I'm like. <laughs> like the next day I was that's too early we shouldn't do nine <laughs> but hey I'm glad you're here um we were talking for off me. yeah absolutely we were talking off camera and we in, instead of making this one like ridiculously long episode because you you have a lot of experiences um I'm super encouraged by what you shared off camera and I think we should uh, talk about just really giving right now and and you're involved in things um, like your phone going off and things like that right now. If people yeah, can hear that, it's good. Yeah, I was really prepared today. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. Um, but what that is is Habitat for Humanity. Uh, Toys for Tots right now is obviously yeah. big. Is that is Toys for Tots still going on? What's the deadline for some of those? So um, Toys for Tots is where I volunteer. I've been doing that for years, and it's just my heart is to help people. And right now, due to the pandemic, collection is done. Mm. Uh, They're no longer taking donations because they want them to sit in the warehouse and just be untouched for like seven to ten days. So, um, See, that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize in this pandemic, mm-hmm. that how, it, how everything is affected. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty remarkable when you think about it. Yeah, so Vince Reynolds and Big Mark Clark, they're a big part of this and all the volunteers that help out with Toys for Tots. And they came up with these different rules due to COVID. And um, it's just like you said, it's like, you know, we're in this new world. You got to think of ways to still be able to help bless children to make sure they have toys under the tree on Christmas. But you got to do it in a COVID safe kind of a way. And they just came up with the rules on how we're going to do it this year. And so... The process has been very fluid. It's been very safe. When you go in, into the warehouse, you have all the gels, all the gloves, all the masks. It's like we're ready for surgery, but you're yeah. just breaking open toys and moving things around. And um, the toy collection has gone very well. In, in a pandemic where generous giving is not really happening that much, it really is happening around, the, around our community. Um, yeah, so, because you hear statistics like... I think in the next, and people all over the world currently are already starving, but you hear the statistics in this pandemic, there, there's like 130 million people in this next year expected to starve to death. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. It's just another it's, terrible statistic. I mean, it's just... It's, it, yeah, there's it, so many things that we have to look at, like Toys for Tots and, mm-hmm. and stuff. So You know, so... Just to wrap this piece up is, um, you know, the donations came in. The goal was $18,000. The the organization has spent $74,000 on toys this year. Wow. There was some money put aside for a rainy day fund. Well, it's been raining nonstop. (laughs) So we've been able to collect a lot of toys. The generosity has been just through the roof. And um, right now we're doing the distribution part. Okay. And the fundraising is still continuing because you know we, they've just eaten through their bank account to make sure all the toys would be there. Uh, we're also asking for donations uh, because boys 10 to 14 tend to get neglected because everyone likes those fun squeaky toys. Mm. But And also teenagers are forgotten about. So the money that's being donated right now for Toys for Tots is going to those age groups that sometimes just don't get a chance to fill up those boxes with those toys so the demand continues the demand continues to increase agencies all around southeast minnesota the demand is so high right now a lot of parents especially if they're in like the service industry they're not working so they're probably not being able to pay their mortgage or their rent the last thing they're thinking about are toys for their kids that's where toys for tots is able to step in and help those uh, families. So last night we uh, got some great video of the distribution of actually going from the warehouse, dropping them off at like Head Start. Mm. 1,300 toys going to Head Start. 
Wow, is that right? Yeah, and you know, we they also work with Christmas Anonymous. I think they gave them 3,500 toys. So it goes beyond just Toys for Tots. They service all the different agencies around the area. So it's just great to see people's generosity in such a very difficult time. Yeah, that, that's incredible. I, I would have not expected that many toys, honestly. So yeah. when, they, when they burned up their bank account... Um, Obviously, they're taking donations all year, and they're kind of preparing for the next year. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you know, the, the hope is obviously not to burn through the bank account, though, right? No, I mean, you always want to have the money there, yeah. you know. But due to the pandemic, you know, we had to spend a little bit more. And I'm not speaking totally on behalf of the organization. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's Vince Reynolds and Big Mark, all the other people. But this, from what I've experienced over the years working there, um, volunteering there, what, <laughs> however you want to look at it. But, you know, it's just been, like I said, very great to see people donating their the toys, donating the money to make sure that kids have, you know, toys yeah. under the yeah. tree Christmas morning. And, you know, you have the businesses that do like matching donations, like Rochester Motor Cars. Mm. They were able to do bring your toy, show the receipt, and then they'll do a matching donation. Um, $13,000 in toys. So they were able to do their check presentation last Friday for ten thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, so we've had those kind of events around town. Fleet Farm has been fantastic. Menards has been fantastic. It's just been really great to see these businesses rally around Toys for Tots. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, when you talk about the COVID distribution to the the to the people, what what does it look like this year versus last year? Well. You know, I mean, masked last up, year, how, are we you, weren't are masked you, up last year. Well, right. But this year, like masked up and set it on the steps. Are you able to, you know, so uh, like last night, can't you, hug anymore, right? You're not supposed to. Well, yeah, I know that. But <laughs> I should say I'll hug you later. I still, right. I still do. I'm a big hugger. <laughs> I know. Man. Me too. So, but no, I mean, you know, when we're doing the distribution, we got the masks on, you know, we're doing the, we're trying to do the best we can with social distancing. Uh, but when you're in a free for all to try and get everything off the truck as fast as you can, you're not going to be able to always keep within that six feet, but sure. we do the best that we can to make sure we're staying within guidelines. The volunteers know the rules. Um, we just do the best that we can and just keep the process fluid because we're all on, we're all on the clock. Yeah, time right, is yeah, ticking. Yeah, we got to yeah. get these toys to where they need to go. I mean, you know, we're dropping toys off in Dodge County, Wabasha County, Olmstead County. I think Vince goes down to. Winona or Houston County, I'm not too sure, but it's there's a lot of distance that uh, goes into the, into the tire wearing gas money to distribute all of these toys, and we got to get them out quickly, but we got to do it safely, and that's why they sit in the warehouse to make sure that they're not touched. Um, then our sorters go in with the gloves and the masks and the gels and hose everything down and <laughs> load it into his. I have a pressure washer you can use. I don't think we need, no, need no. to go that okay, far, but, right. but thank you though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a very. Um, it, it's just been a great system on how they've been able to figure their way around yeah. the current climate that we're in. Now, you're also involved in Habitat for Humanity. Tell yeah. us about that a little bit. And, and First off, what you do. I, I, do you, you work for them, correct? Yes, that yeah, is yeah, my yeah. full-time That's job. That's your job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. work for Two Rivers Habitat for Humanity. And what a, a blessing it has been to go back to doing God's work. Yeah. I mean, you can do God's work every day, yeah. but it's nice to be involved with an organization to get out of bed every day, knowing that you're impacting a family's life uh, with them being able to get affordable housing. And we also do critical home repairs. So if there's okay. a veteran or if there's um, a lower income family, if their forever home is crumbling around them, like their roof is leaking, or if they have subpar electrical or plumbing, we do those kind of repairs. Hmm. Most people don't know about that. Everybody knows Habitat builds homes. But yeah. Everybody knows you that. see the advertisements or whatever of you yep. know, building homes brand new, and I guess I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. So, Two Rivers, we service the five county service area. We um, service Waseca, Steel, Dodge, Olmstead, and Wabasha counties. Okay. So, there's a lot of territory I, gotta, I have to cover from a marketing standpoint and a, and a communication standpoint and spreading the, the good message that there are positive things going on in, in a very negative world that people are um, receiving really nice homes. And if your homes are leaking or if they're having issues, we can also do that critical home repair. So that program's only been around for two years, so most people don't know about that. Mm. So I've been telling people all around town that, you know, we get these uh, dollars that come in from the government to go out and do this do this work. Yeah. And if anyone out there that knows of a friend, a family member, someone in your church that is having issues with their home, reach mm. out to us. You just go online to tworivershabitat.org 
and look at the form and check it out and fill it out and we'll you know we'll see your your story and maybe we can do those kinds of things you know we also do ramp builds oh, just sure. recently here in Byron yeah uh, we had a veteran 70 72 year old navy veteran he was having access issues from his home to his garage because the deck was just old he fell a couple times there's little layers mm. of mold so he's slipping so this individual was a client of Family Service of Rochester. Mm -hmm. So Family Service of Rochester reached out to us because they know, and through our partnership, that we build ramps. And we ended up building this guy a nice ramp. We had the Home Depot Foundation give us some nice grant money to make sure that all the materials were covered. We had the volunteers from the Cass and Manorville Lions Club Mm. and the Byron Lions Club, I I do believe. Yeah, And they just volunteered their time to help build that ramp. So on top of that, when I was talking with him and his wife, he said, Ken, what I miss the most is the American flag in my front yard. Some kids vandalized his flag. So I went back and I told my boss, I'm like, we've got to get this guy a flag and a brand new pole. So we were also able to do that. So, you know, he came out, he saw the ramp, he's very emotional, but then he saw his flag flying there with a brand new pole, donated, and, you know, those are the kinds of things wow. we want to go that extra mile, you know? Um one of the things I, when I'm talking about Habitat for Humanity is people just think we just give these homes away. And they're free. I mean, that's not the case. I, I do know that's not the case. Yeah, talk about that. So there is a process on, that, we, that we go through uh, when we have that opportunity for here comes a home that we're going to build in Rochester or we're going to be building two homes simultaneously next spring in Owatonna. Mm. That's pretty exciting stuff. We'll, we go through a process of getting the, the family story, what fits best for them. Okay. Then we figure out a floor design plan to fit the family. Mm. Um, of course, we need to have the land. Yeah, um, and so that floor design, I, I'm assuming that you have like, say, a half a dozen different designs that, that you work with, or mm-hmm. how, what does that mean? Yeah, so we have our construction manager, Alfonso, and he works with the designers that can come up with some kind of a template for the very specific lot that we're trying to, to fill mm. to make sure that the family fits properly into that home. Okay. So the homeowners have to put in a minimum of 200 hours of sweat equity into building their home. Then they get a mortgage. So no, they're not free. They do work for them. So from from the roof to the basement, they know where everything is because they help build it. Yeah, yeah. Then they're given a more affordable mortgage. Okay. So yeah, well, that's it, teaching. It's a, a handout. How's it's it a hand up. It, kind, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a handout. It's yeah. a hand up. Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I think that more organizations should do that. It, uh, as soon as you give handouts, at what's that? In, in fact, the, what pops in my mind, um, uh, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Is yeah. that something? Some, you that's kind of what you're doing, right? You're teaching a lot of skills there. Yeah, and you know that goes whether it's with a Habitat soon-to-be homeowner or whether it be someone that comes on the job site. Mm. Even if you don't know how to swing a hammer, if you know nothing about the trades, we can teach you. And maybe that's something that you learn, and then you can pass it on to, to somebody else. Yeah. You can stay on the Habitat volunteer team. We're like, wow, I learned how to do drywall. Yeah, I yeah, learned yeah. how to caulk a window. I never knew I could do that. Right. But now that I know that I can do it, now I can continue to help out the organization. Yeah. And that's, you know, when you look at some of the older individuals that um, help us out, they're like our core. I mean, the volunteer base for Habitat, they're the backbone of how we get stuff done. Yeah. Volunteerism is how Habitat gets a lot of their work done and a lot of the other nonprofits. So in the COVID world that we're in, um, for the Rochester home, we've been very strategic about rotating people in and out of the helm. Okay. Um, now that the walls are going up, it feels a little bit more <laughs> packed in now that, you know, when you're just putting up all the all the... Um, all the two by fours, it's just a skeleton. People just move around. Sure, there's a, you're out in the you open. Keep that distance, yeah, you know. Yeah. But now that the walls are going up, it's kind of like this. Yeah. So we've kind of cut back on how many people we're allowed to have mm. inside the home right now, um, which then and, takes longer to get. Which kind of extends the build to get it done. So um, we're fine with that as long as the work keeps going. Um, thanks to our construction manager's great work with timing. We were able to totally enclose the house before the cold came in. So now if it okay. starts snowing, we don't care. The thing's completely wrapped up. So yeah. now it's just building the interior walls. The, the you know the, the trades have come in. So we're very excited about um, – hopefully we'll have that home done by March. 
And then uh, the big breakthrough for our organization is, like I just mentioned, is we'll be building two homes simultaneously mm. in Owatonna. And that's going to happen because the land was donated by Matt Kosky from Matt, uh, from Kotke Jewelers over mm. in Owatonna. And it was always his dream four or five years ago to donate this land and to have families live on this property. Sure. So... Um, we had a huge donation come in from Daikin. Um, they're a big manufacturing plant in the Owatonna, Faribault, and worldwide. Yeah. Um, between them and Climate Climate by Design International, they teamed up to do a hundred thousand dollar donation to build one of the homes there in Owatonna. And then we were just recently given a um, a faith build uh, grant with Thrivent for ninety five thousand dollars. So in a world where there's not a lot of giving, there that is a lot of giving, and there's a lot of good stuff going on. You just have to look for it. Yeah, that which is kind of sad, isn't it, that you have to look it, for it, it? It really is. And, and what, what I've noticed, in fact, I did a little video on it because it did some of my own research, but people are literally scrolling past the good right now, like on social media or in their car on the way by. Mm-hmm. I've been really excited to see there's a little bit more Christmas spirit. It's taken a little bit longer to build, I feel, mm-hmm. but there's more... Um, people going and, and doing the drive through lights and mm-hmm. buy the the houses that's really encouraging because wow this has been a year of just negative 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 I totally agree with you and it's just you know that's one of the things that we want to do with our organization to Rivers Habitat for Humanity is like we want people to know there's great things going on come be a part of it yeah you know it, it's a really exciting time you know we're gonna be finishing up finishing up like I said that home in Rochester we'll be building those two homes in Oatana. And again, due to people's donations and their generosity, we couldn't do what we do, whether it's the donations or whether it's the volunteers. It takes a community to help build these homes because eventually these families are coming into these homes and then they're going to grow roots in the community. They're going to grow more. Kids' grades turn around once they feel a sense of stability. Mm. Um, I remember talking. So in on the Rochester lot, we have the one home that we dedicated before the pandemic And then we have the other one that we're building right now. So this family here, they used to live in a trailer. And the mom told me she barely had enough room in her bedroom for a basement uh, uh, for a mattress in her bedroom. Yeah, sure. She just had to squeeze it in. Sure. The kids were rotating on sleeping on the floor. Who got to sleep on the bed? And there was just barely any room. Just the thing was crumbling around them. The one kid told me when there was severe weather, they had to go to somebody else's house because they didn't feel safe inside their trailer. Now they have a brand new four- um, four bedroom, two bath home, totally secure. The kids feel safe, and um, so the so the one. Son, I'll bet they've done better in school too. Oh, it's sti- bet statistically their grades turn around significantly yeah, now yeah, that yeah. now that they have a home, they feel more secure. They get to be in a school system. Wow, they're not bumping around everywhere, not knowing everybody. But I was, I remember, I was talking with the one son, and I believe he has four sisters. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, but yeah, something no, like right, that. Yeah. But I asked him, I said, what's the best part about you having this brand new home? He goes, I'm not rushed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's a typical dude, isn't it? Uh, totally. Right? So, you know, the, his sisters are trying <laughs> to kick him it. out because yeah, yeah, they absolutely. only had that one small bathroom. Yeah. Now they have two to choose from. Yeah. To him, that's his world. I can right. now go to the bathroom. Yeah, he and feels not feel better rushed. about being him. But that's the stuff that we take for granted. Absolutely. The freedom of going to the bathroom. <laughs> right. And not being rushed. <laughs> I mean, no more Reader's Digest, but the cell phone's that kind of a replacement, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just those kinds of stories I like sharing with, with, great. with people. Just the littlest little thing just means the world to somebody. I didn't know that statistically that's proven that they they're they just become better people Mm -hmm. right their grades go up i just i felt that i had that sense as you were speaking about Mm -hmm. it you know and talk about that a little bit more i used to have the numbers yeah well not the numbers specifically but but it's they track they've tracked that stuff through habitat has yeah so um even with the adults um once you know the adults have the home they also feel more secure they form they feel more stable some go for that higher ed level too that they didn't think that they Mm. could aspire to but now that they have their home let's go and try for this better job yeah which then contributes even more to society Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a lot of them Mm. are kind of being transient you know just bumping around because they can't afford certain things but now that they have that opportunity to have that maybe forever home they can now stay there um we had one lady in owatonna we had a home in New Richland uh, that was a former Habitat home, 
and then um, the former homeowners left the New Richland home, and then we were able to reacquire that land, th- mm. that 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 home through the city of New Richland, and we just had to give it a little bit of love, love on a little mm-hmm. bit more, a little more paint. Yeah. We changed uh, some windows, uh, got some refrigerator and a new stove, and we just put a lot of sweat equity back into that New Richland home. So that lady moved from Owatonna to New Richland. And, you know, it's an older home. It looks brand new again because we gave it a lot of extra love. So yeah. there's just a lot of great things going on. You wow. Know? That's uh, that's encouraging to me because there's a, there's so much. I travel a lot. Um, I was just, I, I got back from Maine last night. And people are hurting. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really rough out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that if we can encourage people to look for more of that positive that is actually still happening, yeah. even though it might be slower or it looks a little bit different, a lot of those positive things that happen, um, I think that's that's sustainable life, right? Like if we're looking at the negative things continually, we're not going to want to go to work. We're not going to want to take care of our kids. We're not going to want to hang out with our grandkids and our our friends, and which is what sustains life, isn't it? And so that positive stuff is just really encouraging, Ken. Yeah, it is. You know, and also don't forget about your faith to get you through a lot of this stuff. A lot of the darkness. I mean, there's a lot of darkness that's being spread out there and sometimes just get sucked into it. Guilty, you know, we all <laughs> do. here, man. We all do. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love your honesty where you say, you know, we are believers in Christ, but man, I screw up. Yeah. I screw up so much, but God loves me. He's got the agape love. He loves me unconditionally, just yeah. like my wife. Yeah. You know, we all screw up. Yeah. But, you know, God loves us unconditionally. He's got a lot of mercy and grace for us. And in this season of hope, there is a lot of hope out there. Um you know, with the homeless situation or the pandemic, I mean, cancer is still running rampant. You know, God's still healing people. Yeah. God is still healing people. A very close friend of mine was diagnosed with leukemia late April-ish, mm, somewhere around there. Sure. Very faith-filled man. And he just told me, like, okay, I got the diagnosis. God's got this. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. And I just finally ran into him last weekend, and Mayo thinks that they caught it in, in time. Hmm. So, you know, he's doing some magnesium treatments and some chemo, hair's falling out and all that stuff. He's like, Ken, I'm not really worried about it. I know God's got this, and yeah. he's almost out of it. There's something to be said about not wanting to die but being ready to, and I think that allows us to live, right? Like, there's just that if we, we are in a... In, remarkable place of fear right now all mm-hmm. throughout the country and fear mongering and yes absolutely and there's people that are, are are cashing in on that i agree um and so i think that when you can have that faith that that changes your perspective mm-hmm. right that you are not wanting to leave this world yet mm-hmm. but you're ready to and, there's and that day- sounds like your buddy. And there's yeah, and there's days too where like, man, I wish Jesus would just come back so we can get out of here. <laughs> right, 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 right. Totally. But yeah, there is just so much fear mongering going out there, whether it's political or advertising. I mean, like my my fourteen year old snuffs that stuff right out. You know, oh, we don't know if we're gonna have this sale next year, if the boats are gonna be around, and blah blah blah. You hear all this. You know, mm. Dad, they just keep selling fear. I'm like, I'm glad you recognize yeah. that. I would rather sell hope. Yeah, absolutely. I would rather sell jubilation and just hope and just good things that are going on, whether it's Two Rivers Habitat or Toys for Tots or any other nonprofit. They're doing great work. They're in the trenches doing the work. It just still requires me to make sure I turn my phone off. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if the mics are picking that up or not. They might be. They probably are. But, but yeah, there yeah, are a good. lot of good things out there. And like you mentioned, you know, when you're scrolling, you're looking for bleeds it leads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been yeah. conditioned over the last couple of years to look for the negativity, look for the fighting, look for the banter. Start looking for the good in people, you know? And there, like I've been just saying, there's a lot of great things going on out there. Be a part of it. Yeah. Reach out to the organization that really touches your heart and be a part of it. Whether, you know, it's like I said with Two Rivers, it's like, you know, even if you don't know if you know how to put up drywall, come by the job site and just pray over the volunteers. Mm-hmm. Drop off, a you know, some coffee. Pizza. Go to $5 <laughs> Pizza and just pick up some pizza and drop yeah. off some food for them. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways to volunteer, paws and claws or whatever, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all yeah. out there. 
And we all have to realize that we don't have to do it for habitat or for toys or paws and claws. Yeah. We do it for um, our skill level, right? Or mm-hmm. our our uh, enjoyment level. Mm-hmm. I mean, that might be Meals on Wheels or that yeah. might, whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's so important for people to realize. Well, I can't do Habitat for Humanity. Well, that's well, fine. You can do. Pizza, you can do other things. You right? can do whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're. It's, it's in, huge. And that's it's what huge. we're trying to encourage. Is like, like you were saying, whatever makes you feel comfortable, and just go out and do it. You can find ten to fifteen minutes, thirty minutes to go help out an organization, and just do it. You know, a lot of people say, "Give till it hurts." I say, "Give till it feels good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, right. It's the same with anything. You know, yeah. just give until if it feels good. So. There's a lot of great opportunities out there. Just find that nonprofit that you really want to pour your heart into. Yeah, for sure. Why don't you give us the websites again? I know Toys for Tots is like this year is kind of out, but we want to just lift them up in praise for what they continue to do. Mm-hmm. And they didn't um, they didn't take this opportunity to back off of it. They took this opportunity to step up even bigger, and I think that's really uh, incredible. That's just incredible incredible work that they do yeah if you want to check them out just go on the facebook page southeast minnesota toys for tots Uh, you'll be able to see a lot of great videos some animation sequences that really get you engaged with what they're up to and um, you can make the monetary donations through that site too okay um we can also want to encourage people to check out two rivers habitat for humanity also that's at two rivers habitat.org we're very busy on facebook instagram and youtube so it's been very uh, fun to get all of those different videos out and just the messages again about the positivity that's going on in the community the community rallying behind two rivers habitat for humanity and just trying to make the world a much better place that's that's terrific and we're also going to put that those websites and links and whatever you want you just send them to me ken and we'll put those on all the videos too so and and on uh, the audios but uh have you heard of my uh corny acronym yet i'm a kind of a corny guy i'm waiting for it Here it comes. Ken, you are shiny. I'm shiny. Thank you for being strong. Thank you for being hope. Thank you for being influential. Thank you for being necessary, and thank you for being you. It was an honor being here. Thank you so much for what you do and to share your message. Thank you. So thank you, and thanks for your time. You bet. We'll see you all next time. 